Blender 2.8 Code Quest. It's the name of the gathering of developers for three months here in Amsterdam last year in April 2018 that kickstarted the 2.8 project. Now, one year later, they came back, most of them, not for three months, but for one week of meetings and planning and just basically trying to wrap up this huge project, which is 2.8. Being face to face is invaluable, really. You can look at the code, you can change things, and you can discuss Blender for hours, and that happened. But the biggest thing of coming here to Amsterdam is that here's the Blender Animation Studio that made Spring with Blender 2.8 for like almost a year now, using 2.8 day and night. <laughs> yes, day and night. The Spring team went from Blender 2.7 Master to 2.8 even before it was Alpha then the alpha, then the beta, and is still using it today, every day. The presentations from the team covered animation, animation tools, even pipeline or sculpting, and especially the heavy use of the outliner with complex scenes. So with the feedback from the Spring team and the feedback from the community on the DevTalk forums and the Blender developer forums, there is now a clear view on what needs to be changed for Blender 2.8 to be ready or to be at least as fast as 2.7. There are a few things, for example, just to name a few, the top bar is one of the big aspects of Blender 2.8, but it was taking a bit too much space when you were not really using it all the time. So that's gonna be moved into the viewport and when you have an active tool, you're gonna see it up there. Or some changes in the tool system, like the transform tool is now gone and is persistent. You can enable the location, rotation or scale gizmos regardless of the tool that you're in. Just like in 2.7, if 2.7 had tools, but yeah, <laughs> you get it. The outliner is gonna show the hierarchy for parented objects as well. It's under some design changes because there are some corner cases where you can have an object in two different collections and but it's being worked on, same as the coloring the icons of the tabs in the properties editor. Many of these changes are already applied in Blender 2.8. Some of them are still under discussion, but I expect some changes in the coming weeks. Following the Friday's tradition at the Blender Studio, the developers gave a presentation to the whole the rest of the team about what they did during that week and what is planned to do over the week. So it was all pretty, pretty fruitful to have them over. Then we had some delicious Thai food delivered here. We had it at the studio and to digest, there were some uh, nerf battles going on here. Having a big office, you have to have nerf battles, of course. <laughs> last word. <laughs> I have no last words. I have no regrets. For a moment, it got a bit out of control. Oh, we have to sit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, shooting your favorite Blender developer wasn't the most exciting part of the week. It was knowing when 2.8 is going to come out. In mid-May, is a target to wrap up everything related to the user interface. In the beginning of June, the developers are going to not code, but just focus on writing documentation and updating the manual, at least on the, the, the big chunks. And then the community can help out with the rest and wrapping up and making the manual awesome. Mid-June is a target for having all the high priority bugs fixed. For example, things that Blender 2.8 cannot go out without, or like they must work. And then there is still a whole month for room for failure, let's call it, or for fixing things that are unexpected that can't come up. So it sounds sounds doable. But remember that 2.8 is a series. 2.80 is the first of many. After July, there will be a new release three months later, hopefully not more than that, then another release later. And you're going to have like three or four blenders per year, hopefully, if everything works out. So don't be bummed if a feature doesn't make it to 2.80. Just wait uh, three, four months and they will be in the next release. And there is already so many good things waiting for 2.81. There is UDIM support, which is pretty much done. But if it gets added to 2.80, it can bring some unexpected changes and make it unstable. So better keep it for 2.81. There is the paint uh, improvements, sculpting improvements by Pablo Dovarro. There are fracture modifiers, there is asset management, uh, library overrides. So yeah, there is a lot to be excited about 2.80, but I'm personally more excited about what comes after because with so many people looking at Blender now that it has a new interface and new controls, there will be a lot of new 
faces here in the community and maybe one of them one out of a thousand becomes a developer and then we have more people contributing or they join the blender development fund so the blender foundation can hire more developers and get the development going even faster so yes a lot to look forward to by the way if you like this kind of updates make sure you check out the blender foundation youtube channel i'm running a weekly live stream every monday where i talk about what changed in blender during the week i interview developers artists and answer your questions that's one way that uh, we are trying to make the interaction between the community and blender a bit closer and more more tight so i'll see you there remember every monday go to blender foundation channel and i'm gonna keep putting videos here but they're maybe more like feature focused and more like hardcore development no the other one is like a summary but this is for the hardcore stuff hardcore people so yes see you there